is the infrastructure layer, right? Uh, so just to repeat, think of this as infrastructure, uh, what exists out there, the application layers, and then the integration, right? So all of this have to work together. Uh, the infrastructure itself has three parts, uh, and we'll look at basic connectivity, right? So by that, I mean, if obviously a human is driving a car, the first question which comes to your mind is, I already have mobile data, right? So I have connectivity. Why does my car need another connectivity, right? So we'll come to that. Um, does it need a 4G kind of a speed, modem speed, WIC card? Does it need an onboard unit uh, now with 5G? Uh, and uh, for people who are pursuing your research in this space, um, CV2X, so cellular vehicle to anything. And um, uh, so the V2X stands for, obviously, as Ravi, Ravi's covered part of that, whether it's vehicle to grid, vehicle to anything. We just call it vehicle to anything. One vehicle talking to the other, vehicle to pedestrians, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to internet, vehicle to anything really, so CV2X. Um, the end-to-end -end security part, I honestly believe is the part which is often missed out in most of the deployments we have done for governments, um, uh, not just with Cisco, but even in my earlier role, uh, we wanted to make sure this gets tabulated on day one, which means we don't think about what data needs to be kept here, what data needs to be crunched, what data needs to be shared, some point later. It all has to follow a data or that has to be a national data privacy regime, which we already have uh, for people pursuing a research. You can check out the DEPA standard, and that's what the Data Empowerment Protection Act is all about. Uh, DSCI is, is, is driving the standards there in India. Um, so, so that has to be end-to-end -end security. And that's why if you look on the right-hand side of the stack, uh, the architecture stack, the end-to-end -end security for an intelligent transportation system has to have security across all layers, okay? Um, I'll just quickly repeat uh, at, at a broad layer, right? So think about infrastructure, cars talking to cars, cars talking to traffic lights, cars using the OBUs on board units, basically controllers, basically imagine like little laptop enabled, not laptop like, but you know, if you peel away your laptop and look at all the hardware inside, Similarly, imagine an onboard unit, which can uh, make a wireless mesh, a 4G or a 5G connection, and we'll come to the 5G part of it also later, uh, and potentially uh, just provide you with that tethering. And then it also integrates with the other data point inside the car, which is the human being and his or her cell phone, and, and that's how the whole thing moves, right? So uh, let's now, with that understanding, uh, it's time also to talk about the obstacles, right? While all of this is not happening immediately everywhere else in the world, but I think it's also time that there will always be challenges. Uh, don't look, don't get too much, uh, you know, biased by the numbers. Those are just indicative uh, by the Gartners, the IDC, and the Foresters. But uh, I think the top challenges for any government, let's take, for example, NHAI, right, the Highway Authority of India. Uh, or let's take Department of Transportation US, the top challenges have always been complex integration. Uh, or what do I do with this data? Right? The simple thing is, even if you pick up all the cars in Bangalore, uh, for example, the city I live in now claims to have the maximum number of cars being added every day. Uh, if you look at, uh, say, Pune or Mumbai or Delhi, uh, everyone's adding cars. Every manufacturer is now puzzled with this. What do you, what do you pick? What do you extract? So collect crunch, and then, you know, uh, take it forward, keep it, store it, where do you store it? Um, and uh, again, the huge big data problem, which again, I think uh, uh, Ravi, Ravi, Ravi Kiran really spoke about. And mind you, not it's not like a, you know, because we are often biased by a Tesla, we all think it's going to generate three petabytes of data in two hours. Not really, right? And we look at edge compute kind of a scenario. Um, and siloed networks, it's a big problem. Uh, siloed just means, you know, one part not talking to the other part in the system. Uh, so what is the use? No matter how good this part does its work, if it's not talking to this subsystem, you don't have a contextual insight, uh, which makes sense. So uh, just telling you the challenges, but uh, 
I think the future as we see it, and this is completely the software layers, right? Or software-defined networking, really, uh, which is now the current evolution of everything in TCP IP world. So you're talking about open, interoperable, RESTful APIs, right? So representational state transfer APIs, much like your, your HTTP calls. You simply type www, www um, let's just say google.com, and you're actually fetching something. So you're fetching something, getting something, so get, put, then you fill up a form, you create, and that's about it. Simple operations um, with, with the highest level of security allows you to share this. So an open, extensible platform approach primarily focuses on not having a protocol uh, anywhere in the stack which says, I can only work, for example, imagine if internet had something like a proprietary protocol and suddenly some routers, let's say in Alaska or say some routers in Malaysia said, we don't talk TCP IP. Um, so, you know, that is what will happen when you don't have an open. So it has to be open where everyone can develop and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, the name of the layers there, passenger experience, safety, operational efficiency, mobility, uh, and the use cases below. I'll not read all of those, uh, but I'll give you a few seconds just to sync it in. Uh, just read it in, but that's what the use cases are being developed. Uh, it is obviously not a comprehensive list, but it is something which will give you kind of, you know, uh, how are, how is everyone going? For example, take me home. On a, on a Mahindra new model is all about wayfinding. The moment you do that or you speak that, so your voice command, uh, so the STT, the speech to text conversion happens on the onboard unit in the car, which is integrated uh, with, for example, um, whatever is OS uh, driving the car and that kind of integrates and makes a connection at real time and then finds your home if it is there listed as home. Otherwise, it can pull you for different options. Something else could be just the telematics of the car. Uh, everyone and all of us who own cars here uh, would like to know about proactive maintenance. So instead of just recall or emergency features, how about having e-call? How about the car signaling to the service station, authorized service station, that uh, the wear and tear has reached uh, a critical level? So the threshold crossing alarm uh, for say wheel alignment uh, is due and then you just safely and nicely get a notification or alert uh, on your registered mobile right so the alert is for enforcing an action and so on and i think um, you know we've seen ample use cases you can link through that advantage um, and, and then location-based services are going to be huge uh, because that's the easiest price point right uh, the price to really do a gps kind of tracking 10 years ago was probably, I would say, around 1,000 rupees. It's now down to probably 70 or 80 rupees, less than a dollar sometimes, right? That's the price now you get for putting a location time or a tracking sensor. So just imagine and doing the math, uh, uh, whether you do it in a factory for tracking anyone, uh, real-time tracking, real-time vehicle telematics, huge, huge uh, improvement, okay? So by now, if you're not guessed, Yes, the protocol is going to be, obviously, it is going to ride on internet, so TCP IP based, but the main quadrants or places where an ITS framework, uh, so traffic management system, or uh, is going to exist, is going to be drivers or travelers, uh, TMC or traffic management centers, uh, the vehicle themselves, uh, the endpoints, uh, so the endpoints can be EV, uh, PHEVs, partially hybrids, or ICE cars, you know, but pointing towards the future, which means having an onboard unit. And then the field. By field, I mean the traffic lights, the roadways, the toll collections, big one, right? And uh, if you've seen uh, in the last two and a half years, uh, even um, in India, in our very own country, uh, just, you know, at, at a, just like they say, right? At the flip of a switch, we went from a 100% cash base now to almost 90 plus percent um, ETC or electronic toll collection. Uh, at least on national highways, I would say. And uh, I think everyone who has gone through a fast tag knows it's happening. So easy pass in US is now fast tag in India. And here's the beauty, we are actually taking giant leaps forward and actually now having, uh, doing away with fast tag as well, right? So you just drive through and uh, it's pretty much done at wire speeds. 
And uh, that's the promise which 5G will, will give you as well. So that's a framework which will pan across all ITS, uh, just showing you how the NHAI ITS architecture will be, uh, and they are built on, on the standard architecture, right? So class of vehicle, uh, what point are you entering, exiting uh, on the highway systems? Uh, what data can you push across? So every time you basically cross a toll plaza, uh, you may not realize, but so many things happen in the cloud, right? So your fast ID gets authenticated locally, and then a second authentication is done on the cloud to the nearest center. Uh, the money, you know, whether it's 50 or 100 rupees debited, is instantiated almost uh, you know, in less than 15 seconds, and that alert is pushed out. Uh, some or all of you who have driven through uh, uh, toll plazas in the last you know, 18 months in India have noticed that. And that's just an example of toll collection. But think about now information services or emissions management data being pushed. And I think we are, we are getting there in, in short ways. And um, some of these uh, human process, high friction task, uh, I just use the term high friction in the context of, oh no, it takes too much time. I change my city, my driving license takes time and all that, right? So, or uh, my PUC or emission check um, uh, is due and you know it's not updated and all that. So all that high friction, high latency kind of processes are now coming as you start putting on a centralized place. And that's what you know for people uh, who know uh, the Vahan cloud or the Parivahan cloud is, is doing in India. And yeah, uh, our ministry, which is MORTH, is, is pushing that heavily. Uh, so we're very, very uh, delighted to partner with that, right? So let's let's break down these flows of. CV2X, for example, right? Earlier, uh, this was called as, uh, I believe, DSRC, Dedicated Short Range Communications. Uh, for people interested uh, uh, from the IEEE world, uh, it's 802.11p, p for parrot. Uh, and it kind of warranted that, you know, that, that 75 hertz, right? 75 hertz is reserved for different types of vehicle and vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure communication. So if you really look at it, um, the basic safety messages, right? Uh, and now this is all collapsed uh, into just just below the six gigahertz uh, spectrum uh, space in CV2X, right? So in cellular vehicle to anything, and that's what 5G promises. They have kind of expanded and kept some space, some spectrum for Wi-Fi 6 and some spectrum for you know, uh, what is a new version um, of DSRC. So basic safety messages, traveler info messages, TIMs, proprietary data messages. So think about basic safety messages going across. Uh, that's what an onboard unit in a car would look like. It's pretty much, you know, the size of a standard, I would say, um, if, if, you, if you imagine your old uh, music systems in your car, that's pretty much the size, and they're even shrinking now. It's the size of an external hard drive. And uh, that will go and talk to an RSU, which is a roadside unit. So a transmitter receiver kind of a connection happens there. And then it would talk to the roadside router, which you see there. I've just put uh, you know, Cisco's router there, but it could be anyone else's router. Uh, and then at the software layer, you have a data center broker. So all the historical data, every time the car or the data endpoint passes or makes a connection, all of that is trapped, and then it goes to the TMC or the Traffic Management Center. Uh, the word fog or edge compute is something which you'll listen and hear often. Uh, so I, right now, I'll just think of it as like an intermediary, but we'll, we'll talk more on it. And why do we need that in the first place? So uh, this whole diagram is broken into three parts of the next three slides. So I just want to make sure you get those parts right. So think about all, all of this happening at real time, as the car moves across different turns, as the car waits, as the driver, uh, he or she parks the car, if the car is running, as far as the car is running, all of this is happening. And these are just uh, not, this is not very high intensive. So you don't need a big data, like a one gigabit flow or something. Even a standard, you know, I know 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps flow is good enough. Um, so I'm just stating for the record, you don't need to have 5G itself for, for connected cars, 4G is quite sufficient for what's being proposed. Um, there's one more flagship project uh, in our country for people who heard uh, the Delhi-Mumbai Infra Corridor. Uh, there are two parts to it. One is obviously uh, the Western Freight Corridor, the dedicated 
electric line which has a signaling controlling mechanism and then there is a roadway uh, a, a greenfield expressway eight lane expressway between bombay and delhi uh, you know 1300 kilometers plus and that's going to have similar system so so every kilometer you have sensors highway sensors on cv2x now and esrc as well and uh, if the present ice car and the future ev cars will surely have the onboard sensors and connectors uh, you are going to have all the edge analytics done. So every time, every kilometer you track data which needs to be shared at the roadside intersection about your safety, uh, about you know all the things which need to be processed, uh, and at the same time uh, protecting your privacy rights will be shared. So uh, that's just a high level view. Um, and let's look more on that edge part, right? So again, um, I know most of you have heard by now about IoT and transportation, but in a very simple word, uh, when you say edge compute or fog compute, right, or fog computing in IoT, it's about building little networks closer to the place where the action is happening. Right. So in, in short, it just means um, uh, traditionally, imagine if if all the cars in Bangalore uh, right, were generating one MB of data, so one 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 MB times one million, right. And you just had to process all the data up on the cloud. So no matter how much good fiber you have, that is propagation delay, that is latency, that is round trip time in networking time. So the time to go up there and then process if Subodh has jumped a red light, or let's say if, if uh, uh, Ravi Kiran is, is not in the high speed lane and all those kind of things, right? So it, the promise of edge compute or edge analytics is about running short microservices or software applications closer to the source. And that is the premise or that is the whole promise of everything in IoT, whether it's a robotic arm in a factory, which becomes a connected factory, whether it's a college campus, whether it's a connected car, whether it's a connected traffic light, it just keeps on increasing. So wherever you see the thing which needs to be monitored, if you have a software stack locally there, which has networking, so it can route data, which has storage, so it can store till a point its buffers get filled. And then the big data pipe or engine connects you to the cloud on Google, Cisco, Amazon, SAP. And then it has compute, right? And all this, that black stack of servers is like a VM or a virtual machine. And the apps can themselves then, as they are programmed, and they can be programmed in lots of logic. So we have uh, half stack, full stack, so Ansible, Python, Python most popular here in the IoT world, um, and that's a good place of research for you guys. Um, and a lot of that is also about you have to move data very fast. For example, if three bikers at an intersection have stopped and a fourth biker does not stop at a traffic light, uh, there is no point in processing the license plate of that biker 20 minutes after. Uh, he or she has probably crossed the city by then at that speed. Right? So you have to process that at real time, trap, his or her license plate number, correlate that to a cloud Parivahan database, map it, and then push uh, the chalan to him or her. Right. So the, the the challenge with or the solution for this problem is to always have the edge network. And that's why it's also called as fog. Uh, the industry used to call it fog. Let's just call it the edge network. Closer. Right. And thanks to the you know, the reduction in um, silicon power and everything, right? For example, you can store 100 times, um, you know, you can store 100 times, you can process 10 times faster every 18 months. Uh, the Moore's law, even if it's dying out, um, you still are getting the benefits of it. And then the software layer, the orange layer, does all the crunching. Uh, you can use various terms like crunching, mining, collection, but basically, Converting all this non-TCP/IP data, once it is TCP/IP version six, then processing it, giving it to the business rules logic. This data goes to this cloud. This data is on the Mahindra cloud. Under the Mahindra cloud, this data is about steering wheel data going to the steering wheel manufacturer and all that. So, a lot of think about diverse private clouds here happening. So, um, so this this would be a very high level diagram again about the layers, but this time with devices. I've just put some device names. Um, um, since I work for Cisco, I've just put some standard Cisco you know, high-end router names there. But again, the four stack, the DMC, the transport, you know, uh, so routers which can, you know, will have 100 gigabit interfaces, 
and then each router can you know really push data from 20 terabits onwards um, the road side which will be dsrc or cv2x now with 5g or lt mobile and the vehicle themselves uh, by vehicle we mean electric vehicle or eyes uh, they will have their onboard units okay so uh, let me quickly uh, so I, I promised you the three parts of that edge iot right so let's look at distributed compute and storage right so think about you know iot layers always having that edge and compute and the more you divide and con so whether you're making an iot network for a factory uh, an oil factory an oil rig uh, even you know uh, for collecting uh, for example dustbins right smart dustbins which are signaling to the local uh, municipality that please come and empty us right or trees which are kind of you know giving sms alerts that i need water so everything can be broken down you can just start with a simple four stack and go all the way to seven or eight stacks so edge fog fabric or edge compute um, is happening in a big business where you can customize it to any degree uh, you're, you're spoiled for choices when it comes to wireless access protocols you have uh, um, you know on the on the license spectrum just like you have lte or 4g on your phones you now have uh, uh, LTM, right? Uh, or you can say narrowband IoT, uh, which is now actually made, you know, the same 4G which you get on your phone can now be customized for millions of devices for IoT cloud. So if you're, if you're, you're, like, if you're living in a street and there are 80 or 90 houses, each of the houses uh, needs some monitoring, you don't want to push all that data through your router and then go the long way. You can just have a cloud in the sky and that's what Reliance is um, and I would say Tata is also building that in India. So uh, yeah, yeah, service access is just going to be important. And then the van backhaul, right? So all the millions and millions of sensors, whether it's a speed breaker sensor, uh, whether it's uh, you know uh, even a flag post sensor, everything is going to separate and segment. Uh, by segmentation, I mean segment, uh, divide, conquer, shape data. Which data needs to be stored? Which data needs to be stored and then pushed back? After say five minutes, every five minutes, uh, which data should be shared, which data should be retained by the OEM manufacturer, all the security, uh, what happens if there are failures, um, everything needs to be uh, uh, spoken about, right? So uh, the driving technology right now for internet uh, for traffic engineering is uh, MPLS. You all know that uh, traffic engineered MPLS actually. So BGP, which is the routing protocol of internet, along with MPLS, the control plane protocol. Um, really drives the whole internet and IoT is no different, right? Uh, so uh, IoT is just for connecting the unconnected things. So, and then you look at big data lake frameworks or machine learning frameworks. So whether you look at TensorFlow, a cafe, uh, and you know, so Google has it, then you can use languages like Python or even PyTorch and uh, just have machine learning frameworks. So machine learning is not uh, just sitting back and let, letting the algorithm do its work, right? You have to be very, clear and precise. This is the event. This is the trap or the condition which occurs. If this occurs, do the three actions. While you're doing the second action, keep monitoring and then branch out and make another condition in software. Uh, so obviously, uh, uh, if, if for those who have not heard about HDFS, PIG, Latin, all of this will come into play, MongoDB. So these are all historical databases. And now you have SAP HANAS, which is inline databases. So there's no reason to store it on hard drives. It's all inline database it's done in memory uh, which obviously has a very high read write cycle so uh, all right i'll quickly jump ahead uh, i'm just mentioning names here so that is the uh, the arc ct is the uh, architecture for reference for connected uh, so us follows arc ed nhai we are pretty much you know a hybrid mode frame is for europe uh, so we are all really going to uh, at a government level they're looking at cars as data endpoints, roadside conditions, and then security data practices, and then the whole access layer of protocols. As, for example, US already is now on 5G with AT&T, Verizon. India will probably get on 5G with a few pilots uh, by the end of this year or early next year, as soon as the spectrum um, uh, allocation happens. And then what happens? So 5G gives you the lowest uh, latency, right? So suddenly from... 100 plus milliseconds, you're down to um, say 10 or 15 milliseconds. And But do you need that? Do you need each car to have that kind of? Not really. Uh, it all depends 
on what you want to do. So 5G is all about the network and the services being defined by what you want to do. And then the ultra-reliable, low-latency communication use cases get defined. Uh, hence, the IT capabilities is, is very important. Okay? Um, let me just uh, take a, a quick check here and make sure. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is again the road condition monitoring, um, both you know, uh, for the Western Dedicated Freight Corridor and the DMIC project. Uh, uh, just a high level view, and this is work in progress, but I think by the end of 2023, I believe, uh, when we really have you know all the signaling, controlling, and transmissions for the highways and the freight corridors in place, you'll realize uh, you know the value and the impact uh, this goes on. So just looking at time, I thought I'll, I'll show a quick uh, few second demo um, of, yeah, Jaipur, right? So uh, I think Ravi Kiran also spoke about ITS themselves. Uh, people call it intelligent transportation or connected transportation, uh, which is a framework for, you know, everything connected. But that's how Jaipur city would look like, for example. This is how it looks, by the way. Um, uh, some part, the five, five to six uh, main touristy place where this, this works well. So the lights are controlled. Um, this is what a, a, a knock or, or a network operation center operator or a city operator, someone who operates a city, simple operator who goes in a building which says Jaipur city, smart city knock, he sees this, he or she, right? So lighting are all the lights in place wherever they are. So each traffic light pole has a digital LED. Anytime that light bulb is down, you'll get a simple app-like kind of a thing. So health is good. How are the parking lots? You know, if there are 500 parking lots around the main area of the city, how much are free? How much are not free? Everything through sensors. Urban mobility. So simple, um, you know, our heat map of Google traffic, but extrapolated for a real-time context at real time. Um, environment, right? This is again linked to Suffer, uh, which is our national air quality monitoring framework. So you get the sulfur dioxide, the carbon monoxide, all the levels. Uh, obviously, if then any citizen in Jaipur wants to jog in the morning, uh, based on his sort of health parameters, you can actually chart a route which says, take me only on the green paths, uh, where it's less than 10 particle or 10 particulate matters, okay? Uh, because he or she maybe is a senior citizen and would not like to go in places with just high degree of pollution. And the same story sounds very familiar, especially we all know in Chandigarh and Delhi, uh, right after Diwali, because of the crop burning, there's a high level of smog uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, safety and security, right? Absolutely. Uh, are all the CCTV cameras really working? Now, that's one question which everyone wants to know, right? What, not just having 10,000 cameras um, across Mumbai city, but if none of them are working in the way you want them. So at real time, moving them, watching them out, uh, I spoke about, you know, dustbin. So conferring thresholds, not sending a truck to pick a waste paper bin, uh, waste paper uh, or a waste bin, uh, which is only 50 or 60%. Full. So configure thresholds. So you save on the diesel truck roads and all that. So this is how typically it happens. Um, the city health dashboard. Uh, let me just show you, you know, for example, you can change policies on the fly, right? I'll just, I'll just let the demo run. You can define every day, any moment in time, you can change and say, I'm charging the fare policy, right? Because you're going on a festival day or parking in the city, uh, you should be charged more. So you can create all these rules and software. And this is what is just, you know, probably half a percent of what a smart city transportation framework uh, looks like. But just showing you, you know, so logically you get it. Uh, and you're partnered with uh, LNT for this. We're partnered with TCS and Enforcers. Um, and together with Cisco, we own this solution for people interested. Uh, you can Google for kinetic for cities, but um, just thought I should mention. And uh, so on. Yeah. Let me um, also take you further ahead. Just let this demo run for another 10 seconds and stop. Okay. Uh, so by now, if you haven't realized, this is how vehicle counting also happens, right? Typically earlier or even now in some places when state highways merge onto national highways, the standard modus operandi is hire 10 people, uh, put them on both sides you know, for 16-hour duties and just ask them to count the vehicles. And at the end of a week, they might give us sigma. And again, this is with the due respect, uh, subject to human error, uh, can falter because of tired and fatigue. 
and and it's highly risky because even for those people to be standing next to high moving cars to count them so you can just have vehicle counting right and this is being done uh, or safely borrowed uh, from how us and europe is doing it and this is how uh, india national highways are now counting right right in addition to your fast tags um so that's a simple simple counter uh, which just goes and counts uh, we spoke about traffic violations so if you look at this example uh, you know you probably get a window of less than 1 1 to 3 seconds just to trap that license plate number right so 34 pvjn needs to be trapped in that 2 seconds uh, when you obviously know this person is in a hurry that he didn't even corner um, the the left side curb he just went over and damage public property so by the time he or she reaches the next intersection the challan should be pushed right or his license plate uh, should be blacklisted so this is what i'm talking about edge compute here means the sensors because they are closer to the source are not limited by latency throughput or round trip time you can make that decision in real time blacklist that person or driver and there are again multi factor authentications you have the license plate number so you can go to the cloud database and get any of the owner that you have the rc and the dl details and all those things can be done so uh, uh, just thought i should mention this at a high level uh, similar conditions can be induced for um, imagine the hilly or the ghat sections whether it's in, you know between kerala and karnataka or say pune side or you know wherever or i think every state will have some sections which are supposed to be you know weather forecasting or hilly ghat sections so the traditional way could be just you know sounding alarms the roadside units can actually beep if you're going above 45 and just have a beep either outside or inside um, you know through your roadside or onboard unit but if people don't even still listen because it's just a like a standard beep which says please slow down please slow down and sometimes we have seen even the cabbies by ola or uber um, just press a button and ignore it you know uh, if you're not supposed to go over say 80 miles or 80 kilometers per hour so uh, then obviously the notification does not serve a purpose so that's where you actually bring it down enforcement automatically so the roadside unit can actually talk to the onboard unit of the car which is like a mini motherboard which is mapped to your drive train and everything and it will actually throttle your speed down automatically so it's locked right so all those things can be done uh just giving you real life examples um so just so you get a sense um of what happens uh and lastly just showing you some some uh, the bullets here are just use cases which means literally applications or objectives of what ids are this is how for example in pune uh, which is pcmc uh, that is a municipality of uh, city of pune uh, one of the first smart cities to do is we are doing uh this obviously in jaipur has been done nearby mumbai has been done bangalore is being done uh, some places done uh mysore is also being uh, taken up on a ward footing so you'll find signal prioritization right for example um uh, someone crossing or a zebra crossing can actually press a button um and that way you get prioritization for pedestrians to walk across when there is no overbridge um stop sign gap assist uh, weather impact warnings um so all these things are factored uh people call them different names like connected transportation or smart city cases but in a way they are all you know applications of what what happens in the uh, in the context of intelligent transportation systems um so watch out for this uh, a few places where you can research and google for all of this uh, would be start with the reference architectures uh, look at for example as i told you arc for us look at frame um just like you have fame right one and two for electric vehicles these are reference architectures all across the world for connected transport uh, you're welcome to uh, you know google on uh, cisco site as well under iot connected roadways so uh, i've just just taken a high level view of uh, the industry uh, a few solutions which you've done locally here for the cities uh, the top 10 cities are focused now which which got approved uh, you know till 2021 and the next 30 cities are now being done on a war footing so uh, uh just some of the benefits um i think i'm just over 28 minutes a uh, good time to take a pause um uh, arpita ravi and uh, keen to hear any questions any open questions uh, in the purview of the talk
Yes, uh, I think there's some questions in the chat box. We'll go through those and um, get them clarified now. Yeah, uh, do you want me to, I can, I can look at the chat. Should I take them one by one? Uh, yes, so we'll read them out okay. for you. Um, uh, in view of paucity of time, uh, we'll take maximum two to three questions. Arpita. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a question here. Is India working on the autonomous level three up? Currently, as we see companies launching various EV cars. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. It kind of, you know, pieces uh, we can talk and my talk. Uh, we haven't yet defined exactly, right? Because we all know some people talk about five stages of the AV or the autonomous vehicle architecture or six stages. Uh, whichever way you look at, let's let's consider Tesla. Right, even Tesla is not a level five or six yet. The auto steer, autopilot, is still in a partial autonomous mode. Having said that, my friend, uh, in India, I think the EV adoption, the electrical vehicle adoption, has to spiral. It's it's very heartening, very encouraging from the state side. But the charging infrastructure we all know is the single and the most important reason for everyone, like you and me. Once that gets into the place, uh, in the backyard, all this ITS and everything also gets into place. Uh, 4G gets almost universal everywhere, and then 5G also starts rolling out. So these four conditions have to bubble up. And then I think you'll gradually see as more Hyundai's, Maruti's, Mahindra's, um, every, every car or, or every uh, LCV you think of, starts adopting it. And that's when I think, so let's just break this down as the first fundamental layer of uh, PHEV, partial hybrid EVs, EVs, and then we'll have a phasal approach. But since you particularly said autonomous system level three, I presume you're meaning partially assisted or uh, DAS or ADAS. So you'll always find some, for example, Mahindra, right? Just I think two weeks ago launched DAS. Now they're calling it driver assisted systems. In very simple terms, it's just simple audible warnings before you're changing lanes. And those can be done, right? Uh, nothing stops you. So tomorrow, if Mahindra finds that people are actually benefiting and people are getting conscious about changing lanes, and we all know that's, I think that's a natural outcome. Everyone likes to have a car which can beep if you're in a blind spot, right? Because after all, it's, it's saving you and your car too. Uh, and I'm sure to see such features getting adopted. But I would not jump and say that we are at autonomous level three already, right? Because I think all of this have to cohesively come together. So uh, short answer to you is it will happen in stages subject to this uh, four forces, the connectivity, 4G and 5G, the framework of connected transport and smart cities. Um, the government of India, especially putting a framework for all this systems in place, and then the charging infrastructure, obviously, also coming in a big way. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, with another question, sir, will the level two charger, 240 volt DC, act as fast, uh, act as a fast charger or, or a normal charger? I, I am, I'm going to struggle with this one. I'll be very humble and honest. I am, I'm not a domain expert yet in the EV space. Uh, Ravi or Pitab or anyone else in the panel would like to help me with this. I, I'm more on the uh, the data and the software side of this. So I'm learning this myself, right? Uh, yeah. So I think Ravi Kiran can answer. Yeah, yeah. Ravi Kiran, if, if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Subodh. Thanks, yeah. Ravindran. Hey, uh, the question more about uh, if it's a 240 volt DC, typically it would be a fast charger. But if you're looking at uh, what kind of connector, uh, but but if you are giving a 240 volt DC, it would be a fast charger. Uh, but but you haven't mentioned what current levels it would be. Based on that, you will get whatever kilowatts you are delivering on a per hour basis. So anything which goes beyond uh, 10 to 15 kilowatts now is considered as a fast charger. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Thank you, sir. Uh, I think that's all the questions we have for now. Thank you so much for uh, clarifying the doubts and answering all the questions. And to you as well to express our most heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Subodh for a wonderful and informative session. We would like to present you with a virtual mem memento. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love the immersive way in which you do this. Thank you. Thank you. Really enjoy. Uh, thank you, Ravi Kiran. Thank you, Ravinder. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you Bye -bye. so much, sir. Thank you so much for a wonderful and very informative presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and as we near the end of our session, I request Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Vice Chair of the IEEE Mysuru subsection, and Professor at Sri Jai Chamarajevra College of Engineering to render the concluding remarks. Good evening to all. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, inaugural session uh, today on the EV technology. So basically we have, uh, when it comes to EV, we have this, uh, the vehicle itself, the electric vehicle, and then we have the surrounding support system and the ecosystem uh, which will make the driving experience and owning a vehicle uh, pleasure a pleasurable experience so uh, the two uh, uh, talks basically covered uh, all that the first one covered the ev uh, itself and the charging uh, scenario and the second one uh, talked about the data connectivity and making the whole uh, driving experience in the city uh, more comfortable uh, and safe. So uh, this was a very wonderful uh, uh, talk, uh, inaugural session. Uh, just uh, I'll just spend uh, two minutes on my own experience of owning an electric vehicle. So uh, I was an early bird uh, in owning the electric vehicle. I owned it since uh, 2012, uh, and I owned it for nearly eight years. Uh, it was a Reva uh, E2O, and uh, uh, I had a very pleasure in driving that vehicle. Uh, however, uh, uh, I had a little frustration with respect to the service support uh, with that vehicle. So uh, based on my experience, if the EV has to really take off, uh, uh, one critical aspect that uh, the industry has to look at is training the workforce who are knowledgeable and experts in the parts, in the sensors, in the motors, uh, on all aspects of the electric vehicle. We need a trained workforce, which is in a large number. So that is the very critical aspect uh, that uh, I'm sure somebody will uh, talk about in the coming sessions. Uh, and so with that uh, brief uh, share of my experience, uh, I thank uh, all the uh, wonderful people who made this uh, session wonderful. Uh, first of all, Chief Guest uh, uh, Harish uh, Mysore, the Director of IEEE India Operations. Uh, our guest of honor, uh, Mr. Bindu Madhava, Chair IEEE uh, Bangalore Section. Uh, for uh, spending his valuable time with us. Uh, and of course, uh, the two speakers, our keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Ravi Kiran, uh, for uh, uh, throwing light on the uh, various uh, electric aspects of the vehicle. And uh, Subhod uh, Gajare, that is, uh, for uh, sharing his knowledge on the data connectivity uh, with respect to smart cities and uh, EV uh, and the traffic uh, uh, in the city. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, our uh, uh, Execom of uh, Bangalore section, IEEE standards, IEEE Mysore subsection, and all the wonderful volunteers for making this uh, inaugural session success and uh, most importantly our uh, audience the participants the students uh, who have uh, i'm sure had a wonderful uh, 
experience and uh, i'm sure they will look forward to the next three days uh, for uh, more exciting uh, sessions i thank uh, one and all thank you very much thank you sir very much thank you thank you ravindra sir thank you to both it was excellent having you on the you know first day sure bindu ma'am thank you and if i can just squeeze in i think you know i'm sure we can only agree as well uh, this are really really not just inflection or industry trends these are beautiful research domains for our students to get involved earlier than later and really set the pace right some of the most stellar work uh, i've just mentioned 5% of the projects but i can uh, talk so much more on uh, in the details of some of the epochal projects we are doing uh, especially in connected vehicles in this country um, brilliant opportunities in the space of ev cv2x dsrc so huge request to all the students uh, you know get your hands dirty as early as possible uh, start loving iot start loving everything you you heard ravi gurun talk about in the space of you know battery management systems fast charging uh, because that is the future my friends right it's not just cutting edge it's required now for the planet so great to be part of this and thank you each one of you right uh, sudarshan everyone each of of team we do really really appreciate you uh, giving me a chance to share this thank you and i'm sure my students will reach out thank you ravi kiran sir this thank you the, all the best for this next session thank, thank, thank you thank you namaste all but it's wonderful both ravi kiran and subodh thank you ravi so good excellent thank you oh well, thank you harish sir you've been there throughout thank you <laughs> thank you thank you harish sir thank you bye Thanks giving Take the excellent care. inaugural thank lecture you. Yeah, take care of yourself. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. sure. Stay safe everyone. Bye-bye.